Yes, it was nice. It was a good trip. Um, good competition, um, good opportunity for these student athletes to experience something other than um, their own communities, um, to be able to um, have an institution that allows your student athletes to travel and, 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 and go to a beautiful place like the Bahamas, but also understanding um, what had just happened to the, to, to the Bohemian community and how they have all rallied around each other. Um, so it, it had a special meaning for our team, but obviously extremely excited about the fact that we were um, able to showcase why um, Ayana Mitchell, Faustina Fuwa are two of the best post players in the country, Kayla Porner, one of the best floor generals in the country, and then an uh, amazing supporting cast that would not allow us to leave there um, without coming away with two victories. Uh, in that first game against Michigan State, Ayana was in a little bit of foul trouble, so she didn't really have the same type of effect that she normally does have on the court. You know, what does that say about the rest of the team that, you know, you had the bench come off and, and score and be able to secure that victory for y'all? Well, I've been challenging the bench because, you know, this game is played for 40 strong minutes. And the team that – the teams in the past um, that have gone far in the tournament, they've had bench play. And we're just trying to get ours ready. And if you had told me we were going to not have Yana Mitchell for a whole half against Michigan State, um, uh, you know, I would have had to probably say, okay, we're going to need to slow this ball down and milk the clock. But we were able to put in players who made big plays for us. And they were able to play against the Michigan State team that's a veteran squad, that's got a lot of talent. Um, but the fight of the, the, the Lady Tigers was pretty impressive, um, even though we were down. We um, figured out a way to come back, and that's a test to their character, a test to how resilient they are and how much um, passion that they played with. What was it? Obviously, we weren't able to watch because it was on Flow Sports. You know, what was uh, what kind of things did y'all do that were able to kind of affect Michigan State in the second half when you kind of ran away with it? Well, in the first half, you know, I challenge our team every game that you know our defensive goal is to hold our opponents 55 points or less. And in the first quarter, we gave up, I think, 16. And that was way too many points. And so in the second half, we only gave up 17. So we took the defensive assignment a little bit more serious. Yana Mitchell was back. Um, we had her for the full uh, second half. Defensively, we went to our full court pressure. Felt like that got us going, um, not only from a transition standpoint, turning them over, disrupting their, their two really um, star players on the perimeter. And um, we were able to then you know, go into that third quarter, tie, uh, tie in the fourth quarter, and then from there we just kind of took took a little lead and uh, never looked back. Um, trailing the number 15 team in the country, I know it's on a neutral court, but you, but you take them where you can get them. But that, how, how much can that help you? Was that maybe the game you've been waiting for the last year or two to not put you over the hump, but make a statement and something you could build on the rest of this year? How far can it take you? I think it can take you really far because the experience of those big three that I just mentioned earlier are now finishing games for us. Um, last year, you know, there, it was a new role for them because prior to that you had a, a Raging Moncrief, you had a, a Chloe Jackson, you had players that took on that role. And so just them taking um, – the, and it takes a lot of confidence. It takes a lot of guts and grit to say, hey, give me the ball late game. And our late game has gotten so much better um, through the experience that they went through last year. Um, because there's several games last year that could have went either way. And we didn't finish them well. And I think this team has taken the time in the off season to work on their craft, to get better in, in certain areas. And there's still certain areas that challenge us. We've got to get better. Um, with always obviously taking care of the basketball, maximizing all possessions. Um, getting to the free throw line, we've done a great job of that. Now we've got to make more free throws. So this team is, is still learning and, and gelling, but I'm really pleased with their effort, um, especially when you play a team like Rutgers, who is physical, who's going to win a lot of ball games, who won the other side of the Junk New Jam. And then you also are at Tulane, you're down, and then you fight to get yourself back into the game and win and close that game. Um, all of those experiences are making us better. And that's what our non-conference schedule is, is designed for, is to get us ready for March Madness. Obviously, we got a big task um, coming up in the next week. Where we got Nichols tomorrow, and then we got Oklahoma on Saturday. So, you know, our goal this, this month of, of December to finish it out is to, be, is to finish 
Um, and we're very intentional how we're going to do that. And the way that we've been playing as of late um, with the bench coming in, we are, we are able to go deep. And so the quality of the 40 minutes has been there where we can play and press you if we want it to the entire game. But also our transition game has is, is, is been really, well, really good to us. And so we want to continue to focus on the strengths of our team. Coach, you kind of started to touch on it about the offseason. When the cameras are there and the scoreboard's turned on, a team has success, there's usually some away from the spotlight things that have happened to get you to that point. Is there a story or two you could tell about the offseason, maybe when nobody was around that you saw that is now manifesting itself in these performances? I think the biggest um, difference that I've seen in this team is their conditioning mentally and physically. Um, our strength coach, Chris White, has done an amazing job of being creative and um, very innovative in how he trains our athletes. Um, we want to make sure that we're also um, having the proper recovery, so our athletic training um, has been awesome too. But Chris White brought to us two years ago what we call Fourth Quarter Friday, where we train and, and once a week for eight weeks on a Friday with the um, Louisiana Police Department. And we're doing a lot of, um, if you will, uh, not comeback training, but kind of along the lines of, you know, being in cadence with one another, training at obstacle courses, um, doing their swim workouts, teaching us self-defense. And all of these things are, are, are coming into play for us as we take the court because every fourth quarter um, we're, we're not trying to lose. And so what they've done in the summer, they've been able to talk about it in the course in the middle of a game and they reflect back on all those times that they were up at 6 a.m. and all the training that they've done. And I think it gives them that, that level of confidence to know that they're in the best shape or even better shape than their opponent. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you about your, your new assistant, Coach Cordova. Uh, I've met her. She's great. Um, got that Australian thing, calls everyone mate and, and whatnot. <laughs> um, you went and got her out of the cold from Buffalo and brought her down here. What kind of impact has she made on the, the team so far? Well, Cherie is um, just positive and well aware of appreciation. Like, she appreciates every ounce of what it is to wear the purple and gold. And she brings that every day to our team. And the way that she's able to communicate with them, you know, and she used the word mate quite a bit, you know, this is awesome. Look at all the things you got, mate. You know, that's my version of her not too good but Cherie is someone that um, you know played at UNLV has a great um, career as a basketball player been in been in the game for a while and um, has has a lot of international connections as well and she meshes well with our staff you know I've got an amazing staff with um, Charlene Thomas Swenson who played at Auburn's been with me for several years now um, a couple of years ago I went and uh, we hired um, also, Aaron Kalhoff, who also brings a wealth of knowledge. So I really feel like the staff that we've assembled has made a big difference, not only in um, the, the current players, but prospects to come. Uh, you're back in the top 25, uh, I guess, maybe after a year or so. But the, how do you approach it with your team? Some coaches say, we haven't done anything yet. Do you kind of pump them up with it a little bit? Or do you kind of say, hey, we still got a lot of work to do, or both? I, you know, I, I'm sure they know, you know, just with, with social media and what have you. Um, but, it, it, you know, to me, polls and, and rankings and things like that, it's, it's really where, you, where you're at at the end. I think that's the most important part is we want to make sure that they know what our destination is. And, you know, we appreciate the committee recognizing the body of work that this group has done thus far, but there is still more work to come. And for them to understand that, you know, just because you got a number in front of your name um, doesn't, you know, eliminate what we have to do. We still have to go out and roll our sleeves up because we are LSU, and there's still going to be a target on your back. And, and to, to have that recognition, like I said, is great, um, but we've got to be recognized. I want us recognized later. I want us recognized for March Madness, and I want us recognized down in New Orleans. So that's me as the coach, um, but I do appreciate – you know, the young ladies' work being recognized and what they've done right now. Of the first few games of the season, you had Tiara Young starting in the starting lineup, and now she's coming off the bench. Was that just something to get her 
kind of going as a freshman, you know, giving her time to get acclimated to the college game? I think with all freshmen, you know, the process um, and, 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 and understanding that there is a process, but Tierra is one of those talents. I mean, she's going to be, you know, one of those players that you look at where, you know, Kayla Pointer was her freshman year, and then you see her now. And I think it's just a matter of trusting the process, trusting that, you know, you're, you're doing everything you need to do. We got to do more, but that she's going to be uh, and continue to be a great addition for this team. I can play Tierra uh, pretty much anywhere on the floor. I'm comfortable with her handling the basketball for us at the point. She's also a, um, a great scoring uh, guard, if you will, from a jump shot standpoint. I like to see her get in there a little bit off the dribble drive. Um, but she's a fine athlete. She's a very good athlete who also can rebound the basketball. And so I, I think just trusting the process, understanding that when her numbers call, maximize your minutes, and that's what she's doing. And then obviously playing for, for your teammates. I think the, the players who succeed the most here have been selfless and said, you know, what can I do for our team to be successful? and not necessarily looking at things from a different perspective. But I always like when people say, you know, I get to do this. I get to wear the purple and gold. I get to play with you, Ayanna Mitchell. Um, to me, that's where the biggest transition has come. When you have such an elite basketball player coming from high school, scored, what, 4,000 points. So now she's learning how to navigate with a team and navigate through the um, defensive um, requirements and the offensive system that we've got in place. And then it's just a matter of her finding her niche, which she's um, slowly but surely doing. Any other questions for Nikki? Just about Nikki Samara, you know, where you see her coming down the season, kind of the challenges she may face in her act. Coming off of a really big week in Anthem, so pumped up for this election. Well, if, if we're not pumped up with 5,000 kids <laughs> coming to our game, that's a problem. Um, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a great environment, and, uh, you know, our team is focused. We, we, we don't not take anybody serious. We're going through our scouting report, which I got to get to film. We're doing everything that we, we did for Michigan State. There's no different for, for Nickel State. It's still the same. The competition is still there, and it's about LSU women's basketball. Thank you. Thank you.